Hello friends, I am Avir Anwarizani and today we are going to study the analysis of a laminated composite plates based on first order shear deformation theory using the MATLAB code. So we have already studied uh, uh, by the last few lectures, in the last few lectures, uh, the classical laminated plate theory, first order shear deformation theory, uh, reduced third order shear deformation theory, zigzag theory and uh, many more other theories we have studied. But today we will focus for the MATLAB code for the first order shear deformation theory. So just have a brief review of first order shear deformation theory. So we know that in the first order shear deformation theory, uh, just uh, the plane section is no more perpendicular to the mid surface before and after bending as if this condition or assumption was there in the classical plate theory. So we will see that the displacement speed along x axis would be u naught of xy plus z times phi of xy v of x, y, z equals to v naught plus z times phi, y and uh, w of x, y, z is only the function of uh, mid plane lamina but not the function of z. So the total unknowns we can see that here u naught, v naught, w naught and phi x, phi, y. So five unknowns are there. Okay. So we will have five equations for this. Okay. And uh, these are the displacement fields. So the strain fields would be epsilon xx. That would be del u naught by del x plus z times del phi x by del x. When we will have the partial derivative with respect to x. Similarly, with respect to uh, del v by del y. So we will have epsilon y y, gamma x y, then gamma x z and gamma y z. So these would be our uh, strains. And uh, we know that the gamma x z from here, if we see, that is the phi x of x comma y plus del w naught by del x and gamma y z is phi y plus del w naught by del y. So gamma x z and gamma y z which is, which is a shear strain uh, and these two strains are independent of the z, z axis. So we can say that gamma x z and gamma y z is constant throughout the thickness of the laminate or the plate. Okay. So now we will uh, go to the MATLAB and uh, we will start working on MATLAB. So uh, this is the code. It is already written here for the first order shear deformation theory. And uh, one paper is there by Whitney and Pegano. So we have produced also some results from uh, for that paper. So we will just start with it. So we will write some clear all, close all these things, some parameters which required here we will write here. And the required input data which are required input data are that first of all, it is asking for the number of layer of the composite plates. How much lamina or layer we required? So three, four, five, six, any number of lamina if we required, we will just give the command. So it will ask to us that how many lamina we want and we will provide that. So we will assign that with the capital N, that a capital N would be the assigned layer, N layer. Similarly, number of points for plotting is required. So it will ask to us and we will provide that the more number of points means a better results we get from there for the plotting. Similarly, a load parameter QMN is required. Okay, so if we are having the sinusoidal load, so we know that the Q would be QMN sine pi x by a sine uh, a pi y by b. Similarly, <coughs> uh, some assigned functions we are having, some equals to zero for somewhere and c1, c2, c1 equals to 0 and c2 equals to 3, c1 because this uh, first order shear deformation theory, we are deriving it from the third order shear deformation theory so that uh, these parameters are required. Okay. So now we require the shear correction factor which is written here. We are considering here 5 by 6 
and the geometry and the dimension of the plates. So length along x axis we are considering one, and along y axis is one. And total height which it will ask to us that how much we give the height of the laminate. So we will give accordingly. And uh, then we are having uh, we are assigning a length along x axis is a, a small a and a small b. Okay. And alpha and beta are the parameters which are required in the uh, sine pi x by a sine pi by v. So we will require m pi l pi by x l x and pi y by v. Now we will have uh, to get the input uh, that uh, what is the thickness of each lamina. So here we will provide the interface coordinates or uh, thickness of each lamina. So we will get that. Then we will assign the material properties. So this would be the material properties E1 Young's modulus along x direction or means in the uh, fiber direction, transfers to the fiber direction. Similarly, the shear parameters it is required and the Poisson's ratio Nu1 to and Nu2 1. Now the constitutive properties in the fiber direction would be Q11, Q12, Q22, and Q66, Q44, Q55 are the shear parameters. These are the shear parameters. Okay. Now we will uh, find the coordinates, uh, uh, coordinates value x u one and y u one as a by two b by two. Similarly, and then we will come to this where uh, it will ask to us the orientation of the lamina that whether it is zero degree, ninety degree, thirty degree, what we are providing. So we here we are solving for the cross ply laminate okay symmetric cross ply laminate so we will provide 0 and 90 degree on it okay and this is the transformed constitutive properties okay q11 bar q12 bar okay so these are the other than it would be the x and y axis coordinate in such a manner it would be aligned other than the uh, direction of the uh, fibers okay Now the um, uh, parameters A, B matrix would be generated. So these, uh, e, to understand these things, you have to see the last lectures for the classical laminated plate theory we have discussed. Okay. So how we find these things, you can uh, go and uh, see there. Okay. Only the difference would be there that uh, there we are having only three unknowns, and in the first order shear deformation theory we are having five unknowns. Now the, we, we will reach to the solutions procedure where the force vector would be here, uh, the right hand side and only the load would be transverse load acting on it at the top. So we will provide that value Q0 and we have assigned already on the above Q0 equals to 1. So we will see and then the, we will find the displacement uh, vector and that would be nothing but uh, inverse of S hat which is this matrix into F vector and we will get the results for the unknowns. So the five unknowns we are having, UMN, VMN, WMN, and XMN, YMN. So we will get these all five values. And then if we get these results, so displacement fields, then we can find out U0, V0, W0, X0, and Y0. So we will get all those values here. So we will find the strengths then. We will get UVW, then we will find the strengths all the strengths we will get, then the stresses we can find from there. So we will get those strengths. And uh, finally, we will plot the results. So all the results will be plotted. So now we will run the program. Let's run. So what it is asking, the in the number of composite plate lamina. Suppose we want three lamina. So and the plotting points it is asking. So we will give 20 to better have better plots. Height of the laminate, we will have S, S equals to 40 and 0 0.25 we are taking the height. Then the thickness of interface of first layer of the laminate. So we are providing equal thickness, so 0 0.25 divided by 3, 0 0.25 divided by 3, and 0 0.25 divided by 3. So we are uh, Providing equal thickness to each lamina, 
then inter of the orientation of the first layer so we will have 0 degree then 90 degree and 0 degree again it is asking okay 0 degree second layer 90 degree and third layer 0 degree let's see the results so it has already given us the results okay so this is the w bar means w naught of xy uh, w of xy which is the transverse displacement we are having somewhere between 0 and 0 0.5 almost 0 0.2 we can see here okay this point we will have almost 0 0.1 so we are having this value let's see another value so this is the uh, strain along y axis sorry it would be vy so it is the sorry displacement along the y axis so these are the linear because we know that uh, in the classical plate theory and the first order shear deformation theory displacements are linear so in plane displacements we can see here linear and then it is also the in plane displacements along the x axis so it is also plotted linear along the thickness of the lamina okay so this will discuss later first let's discuss this is the uh, sigma xy so the stress shear stress in plane shear stress which is also linear and this is the sigma yy so this value we have also seen from the classical laminated plate theory so this first order shear deformation theory gives somehow better results than that then this is the sigma xx for this value and this is the sigma xz transverse shear stress so we know that uh, the uh, first order shear deformation theory do not fulfills the uh, criteria for the top and bottom shear stress free condition so we see that these are the shear stress value at top and bottom 0.35 almost and 0.35 so it is not zero on the top and bottom surface okay so uh, it, it does not satisfy the shear stress free condition at top and bottom surfaces of the laminate okay so one uh, uh, drawbacks and the other drawbacks from here we can see that it is lamina wise constant the shear stress in this lamina first lamina it is constant then it is the second lamina here it is also constant and the third lamina it is constant and the, the third drawback that it is having a jump so shear stress never have a jump but it is continuously varying okay so from here we can observe this thing sigma x and similarly sigma y is the same drawback here also top and bottom is having uh, some values which is not zero and the jump is there and it is lamina wise constant okay so these are the drawbacks we have seen so some another value what we have left yes we have left this thing so this is from uh, this red one is from the constitutive equations we have obtained and this uh, one which is blue is drawn from the equilibrium equations okay while uh, uh, we are uh, following in the constitutive relation simultaneously we have put those values in the equilibrium equations del sigma xx by del x plus del sigma xy by del y okay uh, so similarly when we put that then we get uh, from the equations conditions these values okay so we get a better results than that where which shows that it is continuously varying similarly we have also obtained for the sigma yz from the equilibrium equation so this is also compared here and it is showing a better results so uh, we have seen the first order shear deformation theory using the matlab code so thank you have a nice day